Mr. President, I should like to introduce Hillary Ballin, University Professor, Deputy Vice Chancellor, NYU Abu Dhabi, Professor of Urban Studies and Architecture, Robert F. Wagner Graduate School of Public Service, to, who will present the candidate for Doctor of Laws. Will Trustee Leonard Boxer please escort the candidate to the lectern. Martin Lee Edelman, quintessential New Yorker. You have for more than three decades handled some of the largest, most complex real estate and corporate transactions in the world. Educated at Princeton University and Columbia Law School, you are of counsel to the firm Paul Hastings and have honed a talent for high-stakes projects involving complicated cross-border transactions. Named by the National Law Journal in 2011 as one of the three most influential real estate lawyers in the United States, you have acquired broad international experience working extensively in Europe, Canada, Mexico, Japan, the Middle East, and Latin America. We proudly claim you as our own valued advisor for your help in skillfully guiding our team in reaching agreement with the government of Abu Dhabi to create NYU's comprehensive liberal arts and science campus there. As NYU Abu Dhabi prepares in a few days time to celebrate its first commencement. How fitting to salute you for your efforts in laying that foundation and nurturing it ever since. And befitting this venue, we note that you also served as former attorney for Jackie Robinson and our co-founder, an ardent advocate of the foundation that bears his name and is so ably led by his widow, Rachel. Martin Lee Edelman, esteemed attorney and our entrusted colleague and confidant, a warm and welcome presence among us, you greatly enhance the global landscape of our university. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by New York University, I am very pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Mr. President, I should now like to introduce Jeffrey Rabhan, Chair and Arts Professor, head of the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music, Tisch School of the Arts, who will present the candidate for Doctor of Fine Arts. Will Trustee Sharon Chang please escort the candidate to the lectern? Aretha Franklin. <laughs> Celebrated throughout the world as the undisputed reigning Queen of Soul. You possess a voice for the ages with virtuosic vocal range and an original style fusing gospel R&B, jazz, and pop. It's electrified generations. From your home of Detroit, where you grew up a gospel singing, piano playing prodigy, you arrived in up-tempo New York while still a teenager, signing with Columbia Records before joining Atlantic and then Arista in later years. Flash forward five decades and your albums boast 43 top 40 singles. 
more million sellers than any other woman in recording history, and iconic sensations like Respect, A Natural Woman, and Chain of Fools. Winner of 18 Grammy Awards. One of them for lifetime achievement. First woman to reside in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and recipient of the Presidential Medal of Honor, Freedom, excuse me. You have had millions spellbound by your floor rumbling, soul rousing, mind sizzling magic of improvisation and emotive force. Moreover, you have lent your musical genius to the movements for civil rights and women's rights and have become a vibrant emblem for human equality. Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin, you sit at the pinnacle of musical royalty, shaper of the 20th century canon of song, and with a voice that is a divine gift to humankind, you are a beloved icon whose astonishing legacy will endure the ultimate test of time. Your Majesty, <laughs> by, vir by virtue of the authority vested in me by New York University, I am pleased to confer upon you the Doctor of Fine Arts, Honoris Causa. Mr. President, it is now my pleasure to introduce Trevor W. Morrison, Dean, School of Law, Professor of Law, who will present the candidate for Doctor of Laws. Will Trustee J. M. Furman kindly escort the candidate to the lectern? Elena Kagan. One of the nation's foremost legal minds, excelling at the universities of Princeton and Oxford and at Harvard Law School, you would become a White House advisor and at Harvard Law School a professor and later its first female dean. Tapped by President Obama as the first woman to serve as Solicitor General, you were then nominated by him to serve on the Supreme Court of the United States. You took your seat in 2010, becoming the fourth woman appointed to the highest court in the land. A native New Yorker, your early tenure as a justice is celebrated for a deep intelligence, clear thinking, and an abiding sense of fairness. In the 2011 term, you authored more unanimous opinions than any other justice that year, which is not surprising for someone who has claimed that no one has a monopoly on truth or wisdom, and that we make progress by listening to each other across every apparent political or ideological divide. With a sharp wit and a wry sense of humor, you combine penetrating analysis with good common sense. Your opinions are full of crisp sentences and memorable metaphors, suffused with language that is at once powerful and accessible for all to understand.
You have taught, argued, interpreted, and applied the law with a brilliant combination of intellect and compassion, always focused on its power to keep us safe and to ensure the protection of our fundamental rights and freedoms. Madam Justice, dear friend, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by New York University, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Mr. President, it is now my sincere pleasure to introduce Robert Byrne, Executive Vice President for Health, Professor of Public Policy and Financial Management, Robert F. Wagner Graduate School of Public Service, who will present the candidate for Doctor of Humane Letters. Will Trustee Leonard A. Wilf please escort Rachel Robinson? Oh, I'm sorry, and Special Escort Rachel Robinson, please accompany this candidate to the lectern. Before I read the official citation for our next honoree, I'd like to note we are honored to have with us today a special university guest, Rachel Robinson. <laughs> Mrs. Robinson is a recipient of NYU's Distinguished Alumni Award and founder of the Jackie Robinson Foundation. And her late husband wore the number 42 on his jersey as did our next honorary degree recipient. From 142 to another, a great tradition. Mariano Rivera. <laughs> Yankees legend, arguably the greatest relief pitcher in baseball history and the last player to wear the retired number 42. You anchor your exemplary life in faith, family, and baseball. Growing up in Panama in the small fishing village of Puerto Caimedo, you started playing the game as a young boy with a milk carton for a glove. Decades later, you evoke respect and even reverence from millions not solely for what you have achieved as the best all-time closer, saver of 652 games, and key to five Yankees World Series championships, but also for how you have performed with an inner mastery as great as your outer calm. The epitome of grace under pressure, you hurled your miraculous and explosive signature pitch the cut fastball with a velocity and pinpoint control that rendered batter after batter helpless. Your accomplishments extend beyond the baseball diamond. The foundation that bears your name has empowered schools, churches, and underprivileged communities in the United States and Panama with an approach you describe in your own words. And I quote, it is not just reaching into your pocket to give back. You have to give what's most important thing, time. I like to include my wife, my kids, and everybody who wants to help. Mariano Rivera. You, you have forged a remarkable athletic career, channeling the deepest spiritual energies into extraordinary worldly success while remaining deeply kind and exceedingly humble. 
you are indeed life's ultimate team player. It is my great privilege by the power invested in me by New York University to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa.